The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. King David said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Shall we stand as the praise team? Sing along with us, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you. 
Yo, yo. 
higher than the highest. He's greater than the greatest, better than the best. He, he's the object of all theocracy. Uh, he, he's the sovereign rule of the universe and what I call a global theos. He's above and beyond the reach of anything and everything must indeed bow down to God. Uh, in the end, everything's going to bow. Everything is going, everybody, everything is going to bow to him. Songwriter says the angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh yeah, we serve a mighty God. And, and I am who I am and you are who you are because of who he is. Yeah, everything I am he made, everything I know he taught me, everywhere I go he led me, everything I have he gave me. Yeah, he's my thoughts before I think them. He's my feelings before I felt them. He's my joy, unspeakable, the center of my joy, my all and all. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad I messed around and found this Jesus. Oops, but I found out even more, this Jesus found me, the God from Mount Zion. Mm. He is Lord and God of all and he don't need no help from nobody. He don't need no help from nobody else. But we on the other hand, we need help from him. Some of us don't, don't like to admit it. But we need him like the air we breathe, like the water we drink. Oh yeah, we need him because life is full of trials and troubles and tribulations and things and matters that we cannot handle on our own. Old man Job said it like this. He said, man born of a woman of a few days and full of these things called trouble. Sometimes trouble just plague our lives. I know I'm right about it. Seems like everywhere you look, there's some kind of chaos, some kind of trouble, some kind of tribulation. There's strife and strain, there's stress and struggle on every hand. There's a constant war going on between good and evil, between light and darkness. There's a constant fight, there's a constant conflict, there's a constant wrestling, there's a constant war going on, on the inside, Willie, really, on the inside between the spirit in man and the flesh. Paul even put it this way, he said, when I would do good, my desire to do good, when I would, when I would aim at doing good, he said, evil is always present to hold me back and to hinder me. Y'all gonna pray? Paul said in Romans 7 and 23, he said, But I see another law in my members, yes, yes. warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin in my members. But then we also uh, have our own battles and struggles in life outside of the body. And battles and strifes in our everyday living. Oh yeah, I know I'm right about it. Oh yeah, I know you in your cute suit today, you look dressed up, you're smelling good, got your hair all dead and done. But when you strip back the layers, there's been some trouble and there may even be present tense, some trials in your life while you're looking at me. Y'all ain't gonna bring me See, there's a perpetual war going on in and outside of man. There's a warring going on each and every day. There's a warring and a fighting, a pushing and a pulling, a struggling and a straining and dealing with this and trying to handle that. And while you're handling that, other stuff coming, y'all ain't gonna pray with me. The enemy on the left, the enemy on the right hand, fighting and warring in the north and the south. You wake up, there's a war. You go to sleep, there's a warring. Everything you do, everywhere you go, everywhere you look, in spite of all this warring and all this battling and all this fighting, I stop by to share with somebody to encourage somebody that it's not your fight. Good God, it's not to tell your neighbor, baby girl, baby boy, it's not your fight. You don't have to lift a finger. Good God, that's why, yeah, I can laugh. I, I, oh Lord, that is just so beautiful to know that I don't have to get dirty. I don't have to go down in the ditch with it. He goes down there for me. That's why David said, you know, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art. Yeah. Yeah. Hacksaw Ridge. Desmond Dawes, a quiet 
skinny kid from Lynchburg, Virginia. Lynchburg. Enlisted in the Army as a combat medic. Y'all heard this story. But he vowed not to fight or kill or even to carry a gun. The Army uh, made his life miserable during his training. They mocked him, all those late in the service, y'all know what I'm talking about. They mocked him and ridiculed him and they jeered at him constantly. It started as harassment and then it became abusive. They considered him a pest, questioned his loyalty and, and threw stones and object, objects at him when he prayed to his God. They saw him as a slacker and someone who shouldn't be allowed to come in the army uh, in the first place, his commanding officer tried frequently and often to get rid of him and to transfer him and to kick him out of the army. Uh, and so as, as hard as the army tried, they couldn't force Dawes to, to use a weapon or to take on a combat mentality. So old Dawes, he, he was allowed to serve in a non-combatant position. Went with his com company as a medic to the Pacific Theater. So in the spring of 1945 in Okinawa, Japan, Dawson's company deployed uh, to, to oppose a grueling battle against thousands of heavily armed Japanese soldiers. They were dug in and waiting for them atop of this steep, jagged cliff known as Hacksaw Hill. And while under attack, under a barrage of gunfire and explosions, Doss crawled on the ground from, uh, from wounded soldier to wounded soldier. And he drug several wounded men to the edge of that cliff ridge. He tied a rope around their bodies and lowered them down to safety without ever having to engage in fighting or warring against the enemy. He did this all while under heavy enemy gunfire and explosive ordinances. According to the documentary, there was uh, so much lead and metal and shrapnel flying around, yet Doss managed to rescue the, the wounded and save many lives. In the documentary, Doss said, I was praying the whole time. I just kept praying, Lord, please help me to get one more. Doss ended up saving 75 men that day without having to engage in the war, including his commanding officer who did all he could to remove him from the command. Veteran Carl Bentley, who was one of the survivors of Hacksaw Ridge, said in the document, it was as if God had his hand on Doss's shoulder. It's the only explanation I can give, end quote. The same people who, who, who shamed him and mocked and ridiculed the man and threw shoes and various objects at him and did all they could to get Doss removed from the service were the very same persons who, who were the very same persons whose lives were saved by Doss with an explanation that it was done. Here's what Doss said, his explanation, it was done only by prayer and as if it was the hand of God. And without having to ever engage in the fight, God was present to help in saving life. It was not, not, it was not Doss's hands. It was the hand of God that saved those lives. In their time of trouble, it was God. In their time of need, it was God. The Bible says he was a very present help in the time of trouble. You don't really even need a weapon. You don't need to wage war. You don't even need to fight. All you need to do is fall down on your knees like grandma and them said. Raise your hands in the air and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. All you need is God. All you need is the, the God of Abraham. And Jacob to be on your side and you don't even have to fight why because the fight is not yours tell your neighbor the fight is not yours don't worry about that thing that's bothering you don't worry about that thing that's pressing you don't worry about that thing that's pulling on you and pushing 
on you. It's not your fault. I deep double dare you to sit that thing on G. I know there's somebody sick it, sick it, sick Sick that thing on G. I would text today is centered around King Jehoshaphat, who, who, who reigned over the southern kingdom of Judah. He, he was one of the better kings of Judah as he followed after the ways of David and did not consult with Baal and the other small G gods of the nations that surrounded them. His heart was devoted to the ways of the Lord. Uh, but he was a militant minded man in that he was a great organizer and he fortified his defenses. And as a result of the surrounding nations, they all feared, they all feared Judah. And the text have it that Moab and Ammon and other surrounding nations, they allied together and came against Jehoshaphat and Judah to the battle. They stood ready in battle array and war posture. The enemy was on the scene and poised, ready for battle. And sometimes the enemy will show up in our lives. Yes, yes. Am I right about it? Yes, the enemy will show up in your world and he usually come poised and ready to fight. Yes, and it ain't always another person. Can I get a witness? Yes, you have more than one kind and type of enemy. Yes, but when they show up, they're ready to fight. Yes, yes. This text illustrates to us how we don't need to lift a finger. We don't need to do a thing. You don't need to form up the troops or call the homies, good God. <laughs> you don't need to gather up the guns and polish up the blades. No, you, you, you don't need to pull out the leather and sharpen the knife. Y'all gonna pray with me? You, you, you don't need to do a thing because the warring and the fighting and the battling, it all, all of that stuff like that belongs to the Lord. These wars we encounter are not ours to wage. And you ought to tell somebody this is not your fight. It's not your fight. It's for the Lord. Three things I'm going to pull out of the text and then I'll, I'll saddle up my horse and head on back down the wild water. Number one, the struggle is real. It ain't, no, it ain't no fake thing. It ain't no fake news. The struggle is real. Number two, you've got to make inquiry of the Lord in the midst of these times. And then number three, the Lord, just know that the Lord is with you. So it is. I hope y'all came to hear a word today. Because I got a word. I got a word. And so it is that, uh, that whether it is Jehoshaphat's day or our day, there will indeed be a struggle. There will be some battles that, that come your way. And now we, we, we don't deal with more than Ammon and the Amorites, the Hittites, the Pissites, and all them sites. We don't deal with them no more. Our, our battles don't come like that. We, we have other struggles in life. We, we have health issues and money issues. Can I bring it to your neighborhood? Marital problems, relationship issues. We, we have a different kind of battle, a different kind of enemy. Drugs and alcohol, bad habits, mental stresses. Uh, uh, good God from Mount Zion, we have this mental thing now, this, this, this mental condition. Y'all want to pray with me? Mental stresses and fatigue. Uh, we, we battle with trouble and trials and tri tribulations, decisions that need to be made, and then decisions that are made in boardrooms that affect you in your room. Y'all want to pray? Telephone call from, from upstate. Good God changed the things for you downstate. Telephone call from city jail or the sheriff's office, the doctor's diagnosis. No job, no money. Good God, but the bills keep on stacking up. Y'all gonna pray? About to lose your home, about to be evicted and put out on the street. Children hungry, no food in the refrigerator. Good God, church folk are talking behind your back, laughing in your face. You got a different kind of battle. You got a different kind of fight. I tell your neighbor, this is not your fight. That struggle is real. Yes, sir. Living in a time when our little baby boys and girls can't go out and about and without you being concerned. Can't go to school. Without the threat of being shot up. Y'all gonna pray with me. Different kind of battle. We're not dealing with Moab and Ammon. And the Bible says, came to pass. After this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon allied with others in the, 
in the neighborhood came against Jehoshaphat to battle. The enemy was clear as daylight. He was right up in Judah's face. Right up in the king's face. It, it, they wasn't hiding. You know, some, sometimes we got the, those enemies that they throw a rock and hide their hand. No, 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 no. The enemy was right there. Right in their face. And he came right up in their face. And sometimes uh, your, 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 your opposition shows up face to face. And he's looking you right in your face. And sometimes he'll come right up in your face. Blatantly. And I know I'm right about it because the Bible says the devil, your adversary, right, yeah. like a roaring lion, he's seeking. He's going about seeking. He's going about seeking whom he can devour. Is it you or is it you? He's seeking. Is it you or is it you? He's seeking whom he can destroy. That's his whole object, is to destroy your life. And I know I'm right about it. Good God. He's bold, and he'll pull up right in your face. All up in your face. Now declare to you, the battle and the struggle, it's a real thing. Sometimes we don't understand it. But trouble, trial, and tribulation will pull up on you. Good God from Mount Zion, make no mistake about it. Its object is to tear you down. Its object is to break you and to bust you and leave you for dead. I stop by to say it's real. Don't underestimate it. Don't misjudge it. Don't minimize that thing. Don't, 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 don't belittle it. But what you need to do is turn it over to Jesus. No matter the magnitude of it, no matter how deep, how wide, how broad, how tall, it's real, but you've got to turn it over to Jesus. But understand and know that it will show up. And if it have not showed up for you thus far, you know what I'm going to say next. Just keep on living. Soon and very soon. It's going to show up. But it's real. It's real. That's the first thing I need to know. I need you to know that it's real and it's valid. It may be a spiritual thing, but it's real. So then, that brings us to the next thing. The enemy was right up in Judah's face. They were right there. The enemy. All the allied enemies. In plain day, you can see him. So what does, what does Jehoshaphat do? Do. He makes inquiry of the Lord. That's the lesson right there. That's the lesson. When your trouble, when your strife shows up in your face, the very first thing, when they swing, don't swing back. Can I get a witness? I mean, if you have time to duck, go ahead and duck me. You, you don't want to get hit, but, but don't swing back. Y'all hear what I'm saying? There was a day they said lay down and be a, 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 a walking mat. But no, go ahead and duck. Don't just... <laughs> Can I get a witness? Your swinging ought to be your inquiry. Unto the Lord. The Bible says in verse 5 and 6, Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of the people in the house of the Lord before the new court and he made inquiry. In other words, the man began to pray. And as simple as that sound, we can't say it, we can't dress it up, but so many, the bottom line is the man began to pray. He began, he began to make inquiry. He, he began to pray. He prayed and asked God to assist in this situation. He inquired unto God, what, 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 Lord, what? What do you want me to do about this enemy that's real right in front of me? What, what to do about this enemy that stood before me? 
says in verse 12, he says, For we have no might. Now y'all got to understand what's happening in the scripture here. The multitude that came against them were way, they were way outnumbered. They were way outnumbered. You ever seen somebody like that? You know you, you know you are outnumbered, but you're gonna still try to fight. <laughs> Man, you better start doing some politicking and some negotiating. But some of them they go on up in there anyhow. Y'all gonna break? The number of the enemy was way outnumbering that of Judah. And Judah said, look, 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 Jehoshaphat said, look, I, 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 let me go take this to the Lord. What are you going to do? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. The very first thing Jehoshaphat does, after the enemy shows up, he picks up prayer, he begins to talk to the Lord. First thing in a person's life is not to know, uh, is to not know God. The next worst thing is to know Him and not talk to Him. Can I get with y'all? Hear what I said? I'm gonna say that again because I did stutter a little bit. The worst thing in a person's life is to not know God. That's worse. That's bad. Don't know God. The next worst thing is to know the man. And not talk to it. Some writer simply says, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear your fingers cry. He'll answer by and by. The Bible goes on to say men ought always to pray. And not faint. Especially when the enemy is all up in your face. You know, sometimes ourselves, our self-ego can be our worst enemy. Yeah. Got the enemy all up in your face and you're just too prideful to just bow down and pray. And say, Lord, help me. Good God from my mouth. How easy can that be? You can pray without moving your mouth. And ask God to intervene. Matter of fact, you ought to do that. When you're talking to somebody and when you're dealing with something, it ought to be a prayer. God. Help me, man, I need help. And God's waiting on you. He, 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 he's itching for you to pray. If that wasn't enough, there came others that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea. Ain't that like, ain't that like trouble? It's already in your face, but then somebody comes and say, there's more coming. Good God from my life. I'm already in the ditch, man. And they're telling me, there's more trouble coming, smiling. And that's what folk will do. They, they will stretch the story a little bit. Sometimes they add a little drama to it. Whether it's true or not. It might be some more coming, might not be coming. But you down, and here they come, talking about who I saw a whole bunch of. Heading this way. And they ain't friendly. Y'all gonna pray with me? So we ought to talk. Some folk, sometimes in some situations, they'll add a little drama, cause a little fear. At the same time, good God, uh, 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 Jehoshaphat is talking to the Lord. He proclaims a fast throughout all Judah. Y'all, do y'all ever turn over your plate? And fast, you gotta fast sometimes. You know, the Bible tells us, I'm off my notes. The Bible tells us sometimes there are some things that only fasting and prayer can, can you overcome them. Did y'all not catch that in Sunday school? That there's some trouble that's gonna come your way? That, 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 that prayer by itself needs to be coupled with fasting, there's some things that's going to be real tough. So, so Jehoshaphat picks up a fast and a prayer. Mm, and sometimes you've got to turn over your plate. You've got to fast and, and talk, to, talk to the Lord. Jesus told his disciples in Mark chapter 9, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. In the process of, the, of dealing with your enemy, 
at some juncture, you've got to make inquiry. You got to make inquiry and invite God to handle this thing. Did y'all hear what I said? Sometimes you've got to inquire and ask God to help you with some of these things. See, Jesus is on the main line. That's what the songwriter says. Tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. You've got to make inquiry. You've got to call on him and invite him to the scene. And so, the enemy is there. Whatever your enemy is, you, you, you stop and you think about it and you make inquiry. You pray. And, and, and you pray and you realize ain't nothing happening. Go on and start fasting. Amen. And so, the third and final point is the Lord just understand and know. Be encouraged. That in the midst of all this, if you don't hear nothing from the Lord, if you don't hear a yes or a maybe or a no, just know. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Know that the Lord is indeed with you. In the process of understanding that battle and the fight is not yours, but it belongs to the Lord. Uh, under, the, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, uh, the Levite Jehaziel encouraged the king to be not afraid nor mm, overly concerned about this enemy and this great multitude. Yeah. He goes on to say the battle is not yours, Jehoshaphat, but it's God's. Yeah. If the enemy shall show up in your space, yeah. just know it's not your fight. But that battle belongs to the Lord. If you can keep that in the backside of your cranium, into your cognitive, yeah. and understand and just hold on to that thought that when the trouble hit, the battle is not yours. The prophet tells them in verse 17, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will be with you. And it's good news today to know that the Lord is with you. I heard the Lord in Hebrews 13 and 5. He said, I will never leave thee, nor will I forsake thee. And I'm so glad to know that he will be with me in the heat of my battle and in the throes of my war. And though my enemies and my foes shall come upon me to eat up my flesh because I know he's with me. Uh, David said they shall stumble and fall. And I'm so glad he's right there with me in the sixth trouble. And he'll never forsake me in the seventh. And he's right there with me like he was with Daniel in the lion's den. He's right there with me like he was for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fiery furnace. And I'm so glad he's right there with me like he was for Israel as they stood at the shores of the Red Sea. And he parted the waters, made a dry roadway, smack dab in the middle of the sea waters. And I'm so glad that I don't have to fight in these battles because they all belong to the Lord. And I'm so glad that he picked me up when I was down and he just placed my feet on solid ground. And I don't know about you, but I heard Jesus. He had a good track record on fighting people's battles throughout the synoptic gospels and even in John's gospel. You see, Jesus is a winner. He fights all our battles for us. You see, there was a woman with an issue of blood. Jesus took on that fight and he won it for it and stopped her issue. Mary and Martha, they had a fight in that their brother Lazarus was laying dead. But Jesus fought their fight for the ladies and he won that fight. He told Lazarus, he said, rise up from the dead. He called him by his name, Blind Bartimaeus. He had a fight with blindness. He sat along the roadside. Jesus told, took on that fight and he won back Bartimaeus' sight. Gave Bartimaeus' sight again. And he said, I once was blind, but now I see. The good God saves the 
situation with a young man who was born blind from his birth. Jesus restored that man's sight. There was an important man at the pool of Bethesda. Someone always beat him as he went to the troubling of the water. Jesus steps in the scene. He takes on that case. Told that man, take up your bed and go ahead and walk. And the Bible says, the self-same hour, that man was made whole. Took up his bed and that man walked. Jairus, the, the centurion, he had a battle with his little daughter who lay sick at the point of death. And some servants sent word, said, don't bother Jesus. She died. She's already dead. But Jesus said, no, no. Bring me that case. He took that fight. He took that situation. For Jairus, he said to the damsel, he said, Talitha, he said, Kumi, which meant damsel, I say unto thee, arise. He fought for the multitude of hungry folk out sitting in the pastures by feeding them with five barley loaves and a few small fishes. He turned water into wine at a wind of Cana when they ran out of wine. And the king said, don't you always keep the good stuff for the last. But Jesus made the first stuff, the last stuff. Y'all break. He walked on water. Peace be still. Ain't the Lord alright? He'll fight your battle. It's a good God. It's really not your fight. That sickness in your body is not your fight. With that problem you're waging, it's not your fight. Good God, that pain, that migraine headache, it's not your fight. Good God from Mount Zion, that backache, good God, not your fight. Whatever you're going through, it's not your fight. I know the repo man got to repossess your car, but that's not your fight. I know you got bills, and it's hard to keep up, but it's not your fight. I know them credit cards all maxed out, but that's not your fight. You ought to turn it over to Jesus. Jesus, tell Jesus, tell him all about your troubles. Have a little talk with him.
is not your fight. The scripture, the battle is not yours. Look at your neighbor and say the battle is not yours. It belongs. COVID-19 monkeypox <laughs> mental stress relationships the battle low self-esteem depression rage and anger the battle is not yours problems on top of problems The battle is not yours. It is the law. Can you remember that? The next time you're going through a deep, tough, and a tight situation of trouble, be encouraged and just know the battle is not yours. That thing is God. If you're a child of God, and if you're following after God, and you body body it for Jesus, now that's what I'm talking to you. That battle is not yours. Now if you serve in the devil, this don't lie to you. That's just that's just that's just good good math right there, right? Yeah. That's just good elementary stuff. I hope ain't nobody up in here serving the devil. So battle. If you up in here and you about Jesus, battle 